evening. I'm calling the meeting to order at this time, 6 p.m. I want to welcome everyone for coming, and I would like our members and uh, staff to introduce themselves, starting with Ms. Saunders. My name is Willie Saunders. Mindy Peterson. Betty Shuffleby. Patrick Carroll. Karen Jones. Miriam Miller. Gina Webb. Sarah Holden. Grace Halbert. Isaac Keys. Linda Smith. Now uh, we'll consider our minutes, I mean our agenda. I need a motion to adopt or amend the agenda. I make a motion to adopt our agenda. I second. It's been probably moved in second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next, you should have a copy of the minutes. On February 6th, 20, a copy of the minutes. I need a motion to move and adopt those. And that should be 2014. 14, right. And if we would, everybody speak up. Um, for those that might be watching at home, they will know that there's a big storm over our heads. But those who watch this at a later time when the sun is out and shining might not recognize that it's, uh, it was raining heavily at the time this meeting was convened. I'll make a motion that we adopt the presented minutes. And that's second. second. Correction. Has been properly moved and second. They will adopt the minutes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now we'll start out by having a landscaping project update by Dr. Richard Wood. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to be with y'all. It's certainly a rainy day outside, and I know that uh, y'all want to stay in here. The rain is supposed to be over in three hours, so we can string this meeting out so that you don't get wet. So we would like to talk to you a minute about several of our projects that uh, the city is in the process of negotiating with the Department of Transportation. What most people in the community may not realize is the major road systems of the city are actually the jurisdiction and ownership of the Department of Transportation. While that is obvious for things like the bypass, people do not realize that all of Western Boulevard, all of Gum Branch, all of Hargett, all of uh, Henderson Drive, the basic backbone of what we drive every day, even, those, even though those are totally inside the city, and you think of them as city roads, the reality is they're not. They're DOT roads. Now, what does that actually mean? That means that all maintenance responsibility, including mowing and landscaping, is the responsibility of the Department of Transportation. Now, several years ago, with your input, the mayor and council agreed that the level of maintenance that the DOT was able to give is simply not an acceptable level for our community. And as you know, the Parks and Recreation Department has done a great job over the years. You have worked with Michael LaCory and his staff to really bring some beautification, but in most cases, just better litter control and better <coughs> removal of uh, debris and then, of course, mowing and, and landscaping to a degree. Uh, the City Council authorized several years ago for the city staff to work out a interlocal agreement intergovernmental agreement with the DOT <coughs> and they do pay us a very nominal mm. amount of money about fourteen thousand dollars a year for the mowing and so forth that we do with that and a substantial amount of money from the taxpayers of Jacksonville on a weekly basis we pick up the litter on all of the major roadways and we do the mowing on all of the major roadways Tonight what we'd like to do is show you an opportunity that the City Council has not yet blessed, but we're currently negotiating with the Department of Transportation, and we would like your input on that. If you will notice the graphic, this is the intersection of 17 or Marine Boulevard and the bypass. You will notice uh, down here where it says US 17, that's the road heading back towards the Burger King and the intersection of Belfort. If you were to take that line to the upper right of your screen, that is the road that takes you to the intersection of Western and 17, where Chunky Cheese and Wendy's and all of that is located. The lines that come from basically the lower right to the upper left, that is the bypass and the Jacksonville Parkway. We do not have a graphic that shows it in its final location. But what we'd like to talk with you about is the potential landscaping improvements for that intersection or for that interchange. For many years, several of you have asked, is it possible for the city to get into the wildflower business? And so we have looked at that and I can tell you that uh, in our analysis, that is quite expensive and let me explain to you why. The seeds are for all practical purposes free. 
but what you have to do is come in and till the soil and fumigate it and then be prepared to plant it and as you know in this climate we would get roughly three plantings a year those three plantings will cost us about ten thousand dollars annually now because of that we entered into a discussion dialogue with the dot two weeks ago and this is the proposal that they are giving to us and i think you're going to be fairly pleased with it if you'll recall before the intersex the intersection and the interchange was being built there was a car dealership that was there i believe it was a buick dealership i'm not really sure i just know it wasn't a ford dealership because they didn't have any f-150s on there like i drive but whatever the dealership was that's the location of what is identified there as wildflowers the Department of Transportation has agreed that on their money, not city money, that they will come in in that location and they will plant wildflowers two or three times a year. They've also agreed that they will do that in at least one other location, which we believe is going to be down in the vicinity of where the DOT office is and where the bypass is in that location on 17. We are still negotiating that. But if that occurs, they would be responsible for the roughly $10,000 a year per interchange. We talked with them about doing the wildflowers actually along 17. And as they talked to us, they said, we're not sure you really want to do that because you have to remember that the wildflowers look good for about three weeks. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of the year, you're just gonna have basically dirt. And we don't know that you really want to have that along 17 but in this location that would at least add some beauty so that's concept one the green portions of this aerial are where we would enter into a joint landscaping project with the dot they have told us that they believe they can come up with about fifteen thousand dollars if the city would match it with about fifteen thousand and that what we would do in these green areas is put in what i would call permanent landscaping it would primarily be a combination of understory plants that would be uh, not annuals but perennials and then also crepe myrtles as you know the dot standards do not let us plant trees any longer that are going to grow to the caliper or thickness that you have on the trees such as the bradford pears they want something that is quote unquote frangible so that when people who are not driving F-150s lose control and run off the road and hit the trees, their cars won't be damaged. So you're all supposed to laugh about that F-150. <laughs> okay. But the concept that we are asking your input on tonight is how do you feel about the city council potentially matching a 50-50 grant up to $15,000 to plant crepe myrtles and understory trees, understory bushes, uh, in the areas that are shown in green, and how do you feel about the DOT uh, and the city entering into agreement where they will plant the wildflowers in this location? So, what are your thoughts? I like, right. I like the idea. Um, I, a nice thing would be to fill it with daylilies because they multiply, they'll get big, they'll fill the area, they're green all summer. Some of them are re-bloomers. They'll bloom twice a year. They're a little maintenance. Are you thinking, uh, Karen, there that, uh, I apologize for calling you, Karen. Is oh, it, that's uh, fine. And Ms. Jones, is, are you thinking that there you would have where the wildflowers are, you'd put the daylilies, <laughs> or you'd put them where the green Where the landscaping, landscaping the part that we have to do. Okay. The part that we have <laughs> to do. Okay, well, we'll see how far the 30,000 would go. Uh, I think that uh, you know that's certainly something where maybe we can at least get some beds of daylilies in, if not the whole thing. Other thoughts? I was just wondering, where does the fifteen thousand dollars come from? Well, it, it comes from each of us as taxpayers. I but mean, it's what already we've, like allocated in a budget somewhere. If the budget which is adopted, if the budget which is proposed is adopted in two weeks, then there will be this money in there. So it would be taxpayers' money that would be in this budget. So it's money that's already coming in that just needs to be put as a line item in there. It, it is money that would come in under the proposed tax structure that the council is considering. So. Ozzy, got any thoughts? Well, I was thinking about those wildflowers. That, uh, if it's going to only be 
just part of the, let's say summer, or part of the year, there seems like there should be something else uh, that will uh, continue to grow and have some color. I know the lilies will, uh, but something else over there by the wildflowers. Okay. Ms. Saunders, any thoughts? In the landscaping area, you do uh, wildflowers. In the spot, in the wildflower area, in the round circle, are you only going to put uh, annuals there instead of perennials? Well, in the wildflower area, all we would do is put the wildflowers. And the reason why is obviously you don't want to block the visibility of those. Right, but would, would they be only um, annual? Yes, ma'am. And actually, they would be what I would call seasonal, which seasonal. isn't even annual. I mean, that's one of the negatives. Wildflowers are beautiful for about a three-week period. <clears throat> and then the rest of the year, they really, you know, the, the heat or whatever, you know, it, it really impacts it. And some of the wildflowers, even the day lilies, they, they're not easy to control. Yes, they sort of, like, take over. So you have to be careful here, too. Well, and that's why, again, in the wildflower area, you're actually talking about... Uh, tilling them under at the end of their blooming season, coming right back in and fumigating so that uh, weeds don't just simply take over the plot. And then you would come back in uh, you know, two or three months later and plant another series of wildflowers. That's why it's so expensive to do wildflowers. But they sure are beautiful when they're beautiful. Yeah. So. Betty, what do you think? Um, I'm just thinking right now. Ms. Peterson, any I thoughts? like the wildflowers, but I just think that's so expensive for mm -hmm. such a small amount of time. What's the difference in, in that and then where the landscape doing the same thing in both places? We could talk to the DOT about, uh, about the same thing you're talking about, permanent landscape yeah. versus. We can ask the DOT how they feel about that. I know that though the reason why we brought up wildflowers is several members of your committee have expressed a desire over the years to try to get some wildflower beds. But we can look at both, and obviously we're not talking about planting any of this in the next several months. This would be most likely installed either in the uh, proper planting season in the fall mm -hmm. or in the proper planting season next spring. So the DOT owns that wildflower property? They own all of this property. Everything that you see there, the DOT owns. Hmm. I do like the wildflowers. I've seen them when we travel in places. Mm -hmm. Example of it is, I'm almost certain when you're going down to Wilmington and you take that exit going into Wilmington on your left hand side, there's a big section because every once in a while you'll see that big field and it'll have wildflowers growing on it. Right before it's like you take the left off of what is it, 17. And then right there, there's that big field because every once in a while you'll see either poppies or something growing in there. And I'm almost certain then that is a wildflower section. Well, many of you have been out to Emerald Isle. Yes, exactly. And yes. when you turn in at that intersection off of 24 at whatever that road is, 50, uh, you know, they have, uh, they have two large, one on um, one side of 17 and then the other headed down to the bridge. And they are very beautiful when they're beautiful. And toward the end, the daylilies, we all know, right on Eugene mm -hmm. Boulevard, on Freedom Way, when it becomes Freedom Way, there's a huge patches of daylily mm -hmm. in there that do what runs in there. Is there anything you could grow that would grow food with it? Like a flower that comes with a food? I mean, well, I, I don't think you'd want to attract anybody to stop and stop cook it. the food. Well, you could have a one day, come pick all you can, and walk <laughs> off the road. <laughs> 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 really you get something. <laughs> Let me also take a moment. Uh, I hear, you know, a lot of good thoughts, which we are not looking for a consensus tonight, unless the consensus was no, all of that's a bad idea, and I don't think I'm hearing that. Uh, let me bring you up to date on several of the landscape projects that we are doing. The D Department of uh, we have any okay. Uh, the Department of Transportation has given us uh, three grants for beautification here on 17 in the downtown area. If you visualize with me when you're coming 
you know, from the Wilmington side and you've passed the Dairy Queen on your left and you're headed towards town, uh, just before you'll, you'll pass um, um, Angie's restaurant on your right, there is a long median just before that red light. That median should have been replaced about 1820. It's so worn out. <laughs> That's the year 1820. <clears throat> It's just, it's, it's not a proper <coughs> welcome to Jacksonville. It's not what you stand for, it's not what the mayor and council stand for. We have gotten a grant to dig up all of that roughly 300 foot long median. They have awarded the bid for that and they expect that work to start. They had actually hoped that it would be ready by this spring. They were behind on their, on their specifications. But we do have that, so most likely in late summer, that long median will be dug up will begin to see landscaping go in and it will be irrigated. Unlike most of our other landscape areas, this one will be irrigated. Now, visualize with me, you're now passing that and you're crossing the new Buddy Phillips Bridge, you're passing the Center for Public Safety and you're coming up to the Kettle Restaurant mm -hmm. and you now come to the red light. You've got the Methodist Church on the left, you've got Johnson Boulevard going to the right. There are two medians there that are old asphalt medians. We dug up one a year ago and put in brick chips. The other we did not dig up. The DOT has given us a grant to landscape both of those. So when you think of the fact that as you turn into Johnson, you have those beautiful medians that are there, we will now finally finish that intersection by having the 17 medians match the beauty of the Johnson Boulevard. So we're very pleased to tell you that those things are coming up. And that's pretty much uh, my update on landscaping, other than the fact you, I'm sure, have noticed that here on New Bridge Street, we have uh, taken out the, the trees, trees that were there that, uh, that were a good effort, but uh, it, it wasn't what we needed. And we have recently planted the uh, crepe myrtles with understory <laughs> nandinas. So. Anything else you would like an update on on city business? <coughs> because I don't get a chance to be with you all that often. The boat launch. The Earth. boat launch. Yes. Uh, two contracts for that work. One contract was for the underwater and for the ramps themselves. That contract has now, for all practical purposes, been finished. The second contract has been awarded for the rest, for the land improvements. They are still telling us that they will be able to have that under construction and finished by sometime in September. Well, the last time I checked, September's around the corner, so they better hurry. <laughs> but we do know that the DOT, I'm sorry, the Commission on Wildlife has awarded that contract. We hope to see the contractor in there shortly. And when that project is finished, September, October, November, whenever it is this year, that will be a fabulous new entrance. And I think one of the greatest things about that project is who participated. It's not a lot of times that government works well together. But this is something where the DOT stepped up to put in some money relative to some of the sidewalks. The um, Fish and Wildlife Commission put in over a million dollars to actually build it. The County Commission put in money. The City Council put in one and a half million dollars to buy the property. The County, of course, put in their waterfront property. When you get four governments working in the right direction for the citizens, I think we can all stand back at the end of that day and say, thank you and wow. <laughs> that's a good that's a good day's effort but we do hope to have that operational I'm just beginning to wonder Patrick whether September is going to get here yeah. in September. the motors are waiting for the other day they couldn't get in that little area no problem yeah other updates on any city business have there been any um, changes with that you had presented a few months back uh, proposal for in front of City Hall with a median option or on the sidewalks is that what the crepe myrtles and mandinas was that that was our five-year plan okay uh, the long plan is still there it's just a function of we don't have the money okay so hopefully one of these days we will and we can uh, continue to make some some larger improvements I just hope that y'all are pleased with at least the <coughs> shorter term it I think it's made I know the merchants on Newbridge Street, many of them have called us and said uh, thank you for getting rid of those wannabe trees <laughs> and getting in some real landscaping. So. Other thoughts or questions? What about new businesses coming into the downtowns and the buildings that you're working on? Well, you will recall that two blocks down there is the old office supply store. 
Now, if you have been here a few more years than I have, you probably shopped at that office supply mm -hmm. store. Uh, 70 West uh, Construction Company has bought that building. They are nearing the final completion. It is a 20,000 square foot building. It's a large building, 10,000 square feet on each floor. They do have a number of tenants that have already moved in in the way of office work. They are currently trying to uh, finalize a potential lease to a national chain restaurant. If that happens, we're going to really see downtown take off. Um, I will also say to you, amazingly enough, there are fewer and fewer vacant spaces in the four blocks between City Hall and the middle school. Still have a lot of vacant spaces down in the heart of uh, the downtown. But uh, I do know that uh, the building across the street from 70 West is currently in the process of being purchased to be renovated. So I think you're going to find that downtown has reached a point where it is turning that corner and almost every building is going to be occupied. And very shortly, we're going to have a wonderful problem, and that is no parking. How do we address the need for more parking? And that's going to be a great thing for downtown. So, uh, Michael Quarry is not, uh, is not here, but let me also mention to you, as you know, Kate Perkins, who has just done a fabulous job for us, she, is, uh, she and her husband are moving to Kentucky, where he is going to grad school. She will be departing her service with the city later this month. I know if you get a chance to send her an email or send Glenn one that he can forward on, she would appreciate it. We are greatly in her debt for what she has done in so many places in Jacksonville. And again, uh, we are currently, uh, actually I believe we've completed the interview process and the process of trying to negotiate for a replacement for her. But she's done a great job as our horticulturist. She has, we can see the difference when she came from the left. Any other thoughts or updates? All right, I'm going to leave y'all to the rest of your meeting. That took only five minutes, so that was good. <laughs> Thank y'all for all you do. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you. <coughs> Next, we will have, <coughs> excuse me, Department of Public Safety cleanup update by Captain Weaver. Good evening, everyone. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Want to, first off to let you know we are still working towards our efforts of doing um, our litter enforcement at stoplights and things like that and I'm hoping at the next meeting to have a better presentation for you for that. Um, I am happy to present on um, the cleanup efforts that we have done. Back in April we did a very long day of cleaning <laughs> up uh, three locations of homeless camps. Uh, one is, was at the Piney Green Shopping Center in the wooded area behind that. And that's, I believe, what this photo is. Um, it was a combined effort between streets. Um, we had inmates out there helping us. We had uh, all of my community officers and our SROs because we did this during uh, spring break. <laughs> so all the SROs and community services division um, got together to work on this with many other people throughout the city. It was not just public safety that did this. It was a city effort um, all around. But at just the one location behind uh, Piney Green Shopping Center, they removed 600 pounds of trash. Um, and that's actually the small location. Um, the next one is Texas Roadhouse on 17. There was a homeless camp um, back in there that uh, they removed a total of 1,600 pounds of trash and debris from that location. And these are just some of the pictures of different people. And this particular one is, I believe, begins uh, Yop Road um, over by the new Walmart, 17 South. This was the biggest location. Uh, they removed over 3,000 pounds of trash and debris from this one location. So all in all, between all three locations, they removed over 6,000 pounds of trash and debris in that one day. So they they did their job that day. They uh, Everybody came together and it was a very long day out there. I unfortunately did not get to join them. I came in to join them, but <laughs> I ended up going home with strep throat, so they didn't want me around that day. <laughs> but it was a good a good day. 
and at the end, we had a nice clean area here. So, and we do these periodically. Anytime we, we run across an area like that, um, it takes some coordination and planning to set it up. But as they find them, they do clean them up and get, get rid of them um, and all the trash and debris. And when they do come across someone that is actually living out there, they try to implement whatever services we have available. If they're disabled vets, we get the DAV involved, um, the Homeless Coalition, um, and whatever whatever services we can find or provide for them. Sometimes they just don't have a, there was one recently a family had, they were receiving checks, they just couldn't cash them because they didn't have an ID. So the officer went and helped them to get an ID. and. Since then, they have a place to live, they have a steady job, and they're not living on the streets anymore. So, and that's when they come across these camps, some of those are the things that we're looking to do to prevent it in the future. Any questions? Good job. That was my question. How would you prevent um, prevention before we get to this point? And I think it's good that you're showing these pictures to us because I had no idea and I'm quite sure other um, once you get past the first line of trees it's amazing what you find that is just amazing uh, a question mm -hmm. you said that they, they didn't have an ID mm -hmm. uh, why not they just didn't have one. They didn't know how to get one. They had come from another state. They had lost their IDs and didn't know how to get one here since they didn't have a home and couldn't show um, a residence. Normally you have to show a piece of mail or something. When they thought that they couldn't get anything without that. So the officers helped them with that. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> when you did this in April, was there any people present like behind Piney Green Shopping Center? Like no. There, like These were all abandoned sites. Oh, okay. So there clearly had been some recent activity there. Oh, yes. They'll actually go in um, for a few days, at least a week before, just to see. They'll leave a note, right. leave a, um, a flyer, something for them to contact or to let them know and if we don't receive any contact and you can go back a couple days later and you can tell if anything's been moved or mm -hmm. if the note's still in the same place and things like that. So these locations had all been available. I would like to know, do they all go to, do they leave that location and go to another location or they all yeah. have gotten... Um, They're transient. They'll go from one place to the next. All right, well, I'm going to do this on behalf of the, um, the tree board. So if anyone from the tree board wishes to speak up and some of the people who were present also at the time can do so. At your last meeting, we talked a little bit about how the honors and memorial program, we're seeking to replace the memorial tree program with this program. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and that this program will be much more expansive. <coughs> Excuse me. You have on page 11 of your agenda a digest of this, and we're going to go through some of the highlights. Um, this continues the tradition of memorials. It adds, though, tributes and honors, and it produces some income that will pay actually for the cost of trees that are being deployed, and it adds seasonal plantings and other things to the list of things that can be for the memorials and for the tributes. <coughs> My goodness. In this case, um, donations of any amount are accepted, but if to fully fund a tree, it's $100, and for $200, it'll fully fund a tree that is a specimen tree that'll be planted at a specific location that the donor will be able to select. Additionally, in the seasonal plantings, any amount will be accepted. But for specific amounts, they can do specific things. And there would be temporary signage placed at the site to say, in honor of the public safety officers that cleaned up this area, we dedicate this, this project and this honor for this for doing it or something else that you might wish to do. And so the amounts that would be given for that are variant and 
for this part, for instance, you would have to fully pay for a site before you got the amount given. But obviously, if there was a considerable um, contribution made toward it, when produced with other people who had helped out, say two or three, to do a project, you might do some signage at that location. Now, this signage would be temporary in nature. Now, among the specified tree and placement options, you can see that basically there are some, some really impressive trees that can be selected. Another benefit of the city horticulturists has been they're no longer planting small trees that come in, you know, a gallon container and you take a chance that they're going to make it to the next season. These will be 30 and 50 gallon trees that will be planted that have a lot better chance of surviving and will have a lot better chance of being kept up so that there's something. So that's why somebody go, well, I can go to Lowe's and buy, you know, an oak for, you know, just a little bit of money. No, that's not what we're buying. We're buying trees that are done by a local nursery. Um, the city has relationships with them and they buy substantively sized trees out there. And again, most of them are 30 to 50 gallons in size. But you can see that um, th there's a wide variety. And at Sturgeon City Park, one of the unique parts of this, it's to represent the native varieties that exist within the pathway of the New River, which as you know, bubbles up near Richlands and exits out um, into the ocean. So the variety of trees from Richlands all the way down to Sneeds Ferry is represented, is to be represented at the Sturgeon City Park. So that's available there. So <coughs> in summary, um, this program does allow donations of any amount. So someone can give a very small amount. No one's excluded because they didn't give enough. And it provides for both honors and memorials, whereas the other program was more um, pointed toward a memorialization of someone. And it does create a central registry. And we'll have this available online so you can look up if a tree was put in your honor or someone in your family was memorialized or something. You'll be able to learn the tree and where it's located at and have a, basically a, a picture thereof. Is it? And it provides support to clean and green efforts which is before the program has not been sustaining itself and there's actually been tax money that's been had to put into the program to help pay for all the cost of what was associated um, with the memorial program as it is. So what we'd like to see is to hear any further comments on this and to go forth with this to the city council for their approval. You folks are seeing this first and we'd like to see what your thoughts are and going forth from there. Obviously, members of the tree board can speak up and say good things, hopefully, but um, anyone else is welcome to speak and do something from that effect. I think it's great because it gives people um, the choice of giving from a lower amount to mm -hmm. a higher amount. So, like you said, mm -hmm. any donation you know, is great. And for as memorial, it's a good way to memorialize a person because that person lives on uh, by planting the tree and it can mean so much to a family. Uh, it can be passed on down to uh, the history in the family to know that my mother and my father was honored. So it really can make a big impact in a family. One of the things we've debated about in putting together the, um, you see here the text that would be used as part of a public discussion of this, is to actually list what the anticipated age is of a tree. I think we all, you know, learned a lot with the Bradford pear tree that, you know, its life expectancy wasn't but 20 years. And that obviously was something that, you know, hadn't been anticipated when that tree was selected. And so we know now with the, with the autumn blooming trees that you folks selected to go into the Beirut Memorial mm -hmm. Grove, that they have a life expectancy too, but at least we're putting it on the record so that we know at some point those who come behind us will have to replace those trees and, and you know, hopefully 30 years from now, but at least you'll know what that is as such. And so of course some of those oaks are, you know, extraordinarily long living. And some of the other trees might not be as long-lived trees as it is. Y'all know a dogwood doesn't live very long. <laughs> Any other thoughts? 
do you wish this to go forward to the city council? Is this something that yes. you, yes. Yes, you so. consensus has reached to, to send this on there? Yes. Well, we'll prepare the item and um, let you folks um, know when it's going to be before the city council then. Thank you. Now we will have our subcommittee reports, tree board. Well, I'll do that on behalf of our, our <laughs> chairman um, is, is absent today for some um, family business that took place. And while mentioning about who's absent, I want to let you know that um, Council Member Angela Washington obviously intended to be here, but like some people know, the testing was taking place at her schools today, so she's been held for that testing as it was there. Well, the significant thing the tree board did, obviously, was the Arbor Day presentation that was on April 25th at Wooten Park. And uh, we had a number of people from the tree board, each member of the tree board, and some other people from the tree board participated and helped advance. We were really honored that we had some community members like Reverend Churchwell and others that helped participate. And the mayor um, brought his traditional greetings to the event. Um, we were also really excited about um, the, the students from, the, from Clyde Irvin Elementary. Um, they provided a really unique um, perspective on um, Arbor Day and um, they were enthusiastic and I think they really um, 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 brought forth a, a lot of good energy that day. And um, we had um, uh, the Foresters presented um, the city with his 34th um, Tree City USA Award. And you are in a unique league of um, cities in the United States that have that many um, Tree City Awards. And so um, I know one thing, when Carmela and I became associated with your committee, we were challenged not to let that ball drop. So we are trying <laughs> to keep that up in the air for you as it was. Um, see Miss Betty there speaking as it was. But um, it was well attended, and as I said, I think all of us were really um, pleased with how, how things um, went with that and the youth and um, how we talked about the programs that were going. Um, we even got to hear the traditional Joyce Kilmer um, tree poem was um, presented by some students from Clyde Earth. Um, we also had a good number of people that attended the meeting. And of course, um, this was the last Arbor Day that um, Kate Perkins seated on the right from there. And of course, Dale Fairchild, the deputy superintendent for parks, sitting on the far left, um, sandwiching in the city attorney there, um, John Carter. Um, it was their last um, um, Arbor Day that they will participate in as city employees since mm -hmm. both of them are leaving and um, uh, Mr. Fairchild has left as it is. So we gave great tribute to them for that. Afterwards, the um, young people participated in the planting of the trees, and um, we got to have some great planting um, done. They were very enthusiastic leaning into those shovels, and um, we certainly had an adequate amount of golden shovels out there for them as it was. So there's a shot of Kate overseeing, and uh, her crew went in and was tightly supervising the proper planting of the trees. We've had some members of the uh, of our group brought their children out there, and I think they enjoyed the jungle gem um, that was out there as it was too. And we did record this in high definition, and it's been playing on YouTube and uh, other outlets from the city, and um, is also available on G10 and is still playing there. So, um, Madam Chairman, I think this was really a wonderful um, activity that took place, and um, it was that. We are looking toward. Um, now, the North Carolina Arbor Day is April 17th, 2015, and the committee has um, considered using that date or the National Arbor Day uh, and, and where to hold the ceremony. And a preference was kind of given to the Jack Amiette site um, in that um, it would adjoin Clyde Irvin and also that we will have the cities investing about $2 million in that area out there with some improvements that are being made and um, this would be a, a, a real site for there. But no final decision has been reached on that. The tree board would love to hear your suggestions about that as it was. Okay, thank you. Next, our recognition subcommittee report. <clears throat> okay, committee, we met on May 21st and selected two residential selections that you have to all vote on. Uh, one was uh, 2459 Northwoods Drive and the second one being 101 Coomp Circle. They also selected um, for the business for June, um, the Chick-fil-A on no, Western. Oh, sorry, Atlantic. my boss, excuse me. <laughs> there you go, Glenn, you got me. Uh, would be Atlantic Construction, which is at 7 Doris Avenue. 
Mm. You're also reminded that anybody wishing to nominate someone for the residential or commercial, you can either contact the uh, city hall or go on their website to get an application to submit it to the board for consideration. We might mention the committee also made some nominations for next month, but we'll reveal those <laughs> as their time needs to be done there. As it needs. You folks welcome nominations. Always. Now, are you giving these out at the next city council meeting? Yes. Okay. On the 22nd. Okay, uh, Education and Outreach Planning Committee. Okay. Subcommittee. We met on May 21st and it was a really productive meeting. We got to hear about the Jacksonville um, Youth Council's environmental car wash, um, JPD's uh, litter abatement programs, and the results that were available at that time for um, the citywide cleanup in April. Um, all of these were successful thanks to city employees and citizens. The adopter program is really starting to go well now. Um, we're getting a lot more interest in the program. Um, our goal is to have all the waterways, streets, parks, and trails adopted by local citizens and organizations. Um, like we talk about, it doesn't take much time, but it makes a big impact. That's it. Okay, next would be our Appearance and Partnership Planning Subcommittee. Uh, we did not meet uh, last month. We will be scheduling a meeting for our members soon. This is a good thing, but we do want to report, as Miss Betty uh, re referenced already, um, and we want to give her kudos for the adopter programs, by the way. She has um, really inspired many people and done some very personal efforts that has caused that program to be the success that it is becoming to be at this moment. But she also reported about the cleanup um, Carrie Terrell, as you all know, is the superintendent for sanitation who has appeared before you and talked. And I asked him on a phone um, call, um, um, have you seen any effects of the April cleanup? And um, there was a very exuberant yes <laughs> with some language to that point um, to let us know that the guys were still picking up from that. And that um, one of the things that had been the goal of the committee was not just to do something that was for April, but to have some lasting effect by making people aware that they could clean up at any time mm -hmm. and if they just call sanitation for those pickups that they could handle them if they call ahead of time as it was. And they said that the number of phone calls that had gone into um, sanitation um, had dramatically increased and particularly the number of direct dial calls um, that had gone into um, sanitation from the advancement of that, um, that number as it was. So he had a count of um, the number of piles that were picked up. I failed to put that in there, but it, there was a, definitely an increase in the number of piles picked up during April. And as he indicated, they were still picking them up in May. So that was quite the deal. Do we need uh, other staff member items? I want to mention something to you that Pat Donovan Potts, who has also appeared before you in Stormwater, has brought to the attention. Those of you who travel regularly the creeks and streams and the river um, know this already. Um, the alligator weed is back. Um, we had this um, significantly under control some time ago with the um, um, introduction of an alligator weed bug um, that's brought in from Florida. And the nice thing about this bug is, is while it doesn't reproduce and cause a problem for other, you know, for the e ecosystem, um, that's also a problem because it doesn't reproduce and keep eating alligator weed. Um, but um, we had such mild winters um, for a couple years um, that the alligator bug, actually, weed bug, actually continued to um, live on. Um, and it kept eating alligator weed and we didn't have the significant problem. Well, now we have the significant problem and due to some funding issues, um, they have to capture them in the Everglades. And um, there's not funding to bring them from the alligator from the Everglades up here to North Carolina, um, where through the Extension Service, North Carolina Extension Service, they were distributed, and then they were put out like the city people put it out in all the city streams and such there on the mats. Um, but um, now they're in, so they're doing spraying, and they're using a, a spray that is safe for um, 
an aquatic um, application. Um, it will take some time. Um, the old way of doing this was that they used to just go in and scoop up the mats and take them out. But this, this um, um, alligator weed reproduces mechanically. So every, if they didn't get every little snippet of it, another alligator mat could grow from just those little pieces that got left behind. Mm -hmm. So this systemic way of um, treating it with the um, application of the spray um, works a lot better. Um, it'll take some time, and as you notice there, the largest mat that she has found was up in um, Cheney Creek, 24 feet by 24 feet. Wow. It literally was blocking um, um, Cheney Creek, and um, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's, it's not good. I know that I see Mill Creek up close and personal a lot, and we had some floating down <laughs> Mill Creek and floating back um, every day, and it, it's, it's been interesting. So I did want to bring that to your attention, Madam Chairman, that indeed they're out working on this and this is something that's going on now. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're going to skip the planning board. Board members, leadership members, or shadow members, comments? Do we have any one? I've got a question. Back in 2007 or 2008, we put on a uh, breakfast for the sanitation workers. Mm -hmm. Remember doing that? And I think with all the effort and help you get from the sanitation department, maybe that was something we could look forward to doing again to help them okay. out. That would be a great thing for the appearance and partnership planning committee, subcommittee. To I mean, it wasn't, I don't think it was much cost because all the members just, somebody gave eggs, somebody gave bacon, this and that. And we then went up on the building down there where they parked the vehicles at and gave them the breakfast before they went on the road. But it was an easy way of saying thanks because they do do a lot for us. That would probably be appreciated. They start early hours on June the 9th. Um, and so um, this might be an interesting way of thanking them for the extra work they did during April and May. Mm -hmm. I understand. Um, did they not say there was money in the budget for that to be done? Yes. We, there, there is not money specifically designated for that funding, but we will seek to find something for you um, and to do something for that respect. And also, if everyone kind of leans into the wind a little bit, they might be able to help us a little bit. <laughs> okay. So well, that was something we were told that there was, would be some money available. <laughs> we're kind of living in lean times. <laughs> <laughs> I'll still cook my grits. Okay. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> <Well, geez. laughs> No, it was something yeah. that a previous subcommittee had right, a yeah. committee had done. Well, you said yeah. you said something about the ninth, and I was not. Like no, the ninth is early hours. hours. We, they they transition, you know, oh, from the you. seven okay. o'clock start to the six uh, six thirty start, mm -hmm. just so they can get through a little early. Right, right. Okay. okay. And we will bring that up in our meeting, which will be soon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, is there anything else? Any summer of action plans for the next meeting? Well, obviously, during um, July, we'd like the subcommittees to meet. Uh, the recognition committee's kind of taking care of their business um, already for, for July. <laughs> they they pre-planned that. Um, but the other committees need to, to meet and carry forth and, um, and, and go to there. And um, your next meeting would be um, thur Thursday, August the 7th. And um, we will be prepared for you at that time. Um, obviously, Carmela and Carla and I are all um, standing by to help you with planning your subcommittee meetings and carrying those forward. Okay. We will adjourn. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs>